So we had a Very nice uh, nice little sell-off, about 1.5% yesterday. Uh, but today, futures look a little better. Um, market mostly green. Uh, what are you seeing in momentum today? 3,900 is your line in the sand. That's where momentum would go negative in the market. And um, again, if we hit 3,900, you're buying. Uh, that has been the nature of these markets for the last couple of month, uh, weeks. And the key thing that I just want to remind people, and, and this is something that Scott drew my attention to, is that the algorithms, when you get into the second, third standard deviation of a move on the SPY or the IWM, the machines are buying. So it'll go against your natural in, uh, intuition to want to you know, try to follow the trend. These short-term moves, these short-term bounces, you hit 3,900, look for a bounce back to 3,950. You get under 3,900, your next move is going to be 3,800. If it hits 3,800, you're buying and you're looking for a short-term bounce. Yeah, I mean, definitely we've been in a pretty tight pattern for some time. Um, you know, 4,000 has been a line that had been the top. We just die there and 38... You know, if we break 3,900, maybe we get to 3,800, and guess what? They just buy it up. Um, we need a catalyst. We need a catalyst to break mm -hmm. out of this range. I don't know what it's what it could be. Uh, today we tomorrow. have some housing plus, uh, you know, China uh, pushing vaccines, maybe trying to to pivot a little bit, and then some OPEC hitting the wires. What do you see as kind of potential? Because you know, when I woke up, when I was looking at markets less than half an hour ago, we were up about 12 handles. We're now down slightly in the S&P. What do you think is going to drive the market today? Again, I think the most important thing you should be focusing on today is the energy side. Again, you're looking at oil, you know, you're looking at the market pulling back this morning, but WTI crude up 2%, Brent crude up 2.3%. The natural expectation is that OPEC's going to cut. They're going to probably go down another million barrels, maybe 500,000. And I know that there was that speculation, the Wall Street Journal story that people that they got wrong. I got I got duped by it. Um, I, I'm backing up the truck here, Mark, on you know oil at $75, $78. I think there's a lot of opportunity to try to get into companies like Devon, get into companies like Occidental, get into companies like Marathon, because the upside here is significantly higher than the downside on the oil side. Um, again, I think this is an algorithmic-driven energy market at this point. Most good, you know, lifelong energy traders the people who you know manage 500 million dollar books like a friend of mine over in switzerland they walked away they got out in june they sold so what you're seeing right now in this market is very algorithmic you're seeing these dips you had that pullback to 75 yesterday absolute screaming buy and now you know you're back up to 79 dollars probably moving back to 85 in the next two to three weeks and again as Sha was just, uh, talking earlier as china eventually gets back that is such a huge economic upside for the oil market even in the face of a recession here, that our downside for oil on WTI is maybe $70. But the upside here, March, April, May, June next year, 110. So what do you make of the fact that so many of the oil conglomerates are near all near all time highs, um, but oil is nowhere near? It, have they already priced in that bounce or uh, is there some upside in an Exxon Mobil or Chevron, or do we want to go with some of the smaller names that maybe haven't participated? I think that the market is effectively saying that they don't believe that this is going to be the short term down. That they don't they don't believe this sell off is real. They don't believe it's going to last. You know, so this opportunity to step in and buy again. I I talked about Devin. We have a trade in this and Flashpoint. Um, you know, you're talking about a company with an eight percent dividend in oil and gas production. I mean, that is usually reserved for MLPs for pipeline companies. So a company like Devon, if I can sell puts down into the fifty dollar level, that's a screaming opportunity. Now, a company like Exxon and Chevron, there's a little bit more geopolitical global risk associated with that. I like to stay here in the Permian Basin. Again, we've talked about this. Every time that Occidental falls into the high 50s, Buffett's buying $250 million of it. Every time that Devin pulls back, it's found a way to rubber band back and sling higher. So I, I like the trading to the downside. I like the selling puts any type of weakness that comes in this market. I think it's, a, you know, I, 
to be very candid with you, Mark, I don't think that we're going to have an opportunity like this for another 10 years. So I want, I'm, I'm backing up with both hands and I'm very excited about this energy sector. Uh, interesting. Um, so Devin is probably your favorite and then you're like an oxy. Number one. Uh, what do you make, last question, and then I know we got to go to trade talk. Sure. Um, what do you make of these uh, biodiesel, uh, these biodiesel deals that we've seen in BP? Shell just announced one yesterday, uh, and uh, I believe there was a. We've seen about almost ten billion dollars in biodiesel deals this year. Uh, what do you make of that? It's it's the nature of the market. Again, the incentives from the United States government are are forced there, and these companies have to do this anyway in order to comply with various you know agreements in terms of uh, oil and gas uh, carbon reduction. At the end of the day, I mean, the way that I personally feel about it is, I'll say it, I think it's a scam, but. Um, they're they're going to move in this direction. There's going to be a lot of capacity there. There's going to be a lot of demand there because these agreements that are being signed by politicians who have very little understanding about how, how the global oil and gas market work, um, they don't seem to understand that these 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 agreements are by default bad for the global economy. They're inflationary in, in, in very simple nature. But the key thing here is that, keep this in mind, Mark, like oil prices did not hit a record price this year, but gasoline and diesel did. Why? Because of government mandates, because of the renewable fuel standards, because of the uh, credit system that is put in uh, the renewable credits. All of these companies have a massive incentive to diversify into the biodiesel market because the government is mandating it. And it's a huge money opportunity because again, follow the money. There's opportunity there. Sub so puts, look at companies like Valero, look at companies like Suncor, look at the companies that are gonna continue to move in this direction because the government says they have to. It doesn't mean that I'm happy about it. I obviously am a free market person. This is dirigism, which is effectively, you know, government demanding what, the, what companies do. But you follow the money, you trade with that trend, and you sell puts on these companies, and you're gonna, you're gonna do financially well uh, because, that's where the money is.